Hey everybody, it's me, DioGenZ, coming at you with a brand new series called Pokemon Potential. Now, the reason and main purpose of this series is to educate you on metagame, and that is for Pokemon. All those fans that my analytics say is the majority of my subscriber basis, so this is for you guys. Everybody who wants to know how I would train a poke, my strategies, you'll want to tune in on a weekly basis to find that out. And here's a fun thing that I do that I'll talk about more in the end of this episode. I give away shinies every 10 episodes, so find out in the end how you can do that. But today what we're talking about is my favorite poke, my original starter to the entire franchise. I started off with the second gen, and my final evolved starter was Typhlosion. Now, Typhlosion from Metagame is not very much like a Blaziken. It's not beefy like a Swampert. It really doesn't have a lot of play options. It has some main sweep ability if it's kept in maybe RU or um, even NU. But it can also be assisted by a Sunny Day team. That's why I included Solar Beam in the other options. You can also set up Sunny Day with Typhlosion yourself. But based on its base stats, I wouldn't be wasting too much time on that. You could easily get knocked out by one of its weaknesses that don't even appear on the field, but just appear in the moveset that your foe possesses, and that would definitely be a problem for you. So the main focus with this set is that it's a special sweeping, focus blasting, fire blasting, hidden power, extra sensory blasting set that will maximize its special attacking power and speed so as you can see by base stats it makes the most sense you tend to know what you're going to ev train if you want a quick hint for other pokes you're trying to breed and i haven't yet covered just look at what their two main highest stats are and that should tell you what you'll be training them for what natures you should look out for and if natures are somewhat new to you I recommend checking out my Effort Value Expertise Guide. It goes over all the little hidden nuances of the game that make metagame so difficult and different than the main storyline because when it came to my first starter, this being Typhlosion, its final evolved form, it was met as the most quick way to go through the game. That's what the guide said every time, that if you wanted to just speed run through, you would choose Cyndaquil because it was just so fast and super powered, but that's in the main storyline. When you get into metagame, things like a modest nature, a timid nature, those all tend to matter. And the thing with natures is that you can get one that's not beneficial to stats that you're trying to upgrade, so it can make the difference of choosing one egg over another, and also makes it somewhat tedious when you get down to it, but Perhaps I'll make a video on how to make it less tedious one day. So this is the best range for its coverage, and its other options are pretty much its only other options. That's the problem with using it as a special sweeper. It's somewhat of a shallow move pool. It would be better if Flash Fire, the ability which is another option, was available. That's something I should mention. It's not truly available in any dream world, the only possible way to get it is to just hack it into the game, and that's all up to you whether or not you want to do that. But it would be nice if Nintendo released it in some form or fashion. Flash Fire would allow it to switch out on any fire potential move. You detect a fire blast coming towards your Lilligant, you could switch right out on the perfect moment, have its eruption boosted even better and then you'll be good to go for the rest of the game. So it's a free switch that unfortunately isn't there through legitimate means, but is something to look out for in the future. And another way to possibly formulate a Typhlosion's fighting capacity would be through physical means. Now unfortunately this is not the wisest option. There is a significant difference in its base stats between special and physical attack. But, as you can see, it does have different options in physical attacking range than it did in the Special Realm. So instead of relying on a Hidden Power Grass or Electric, you could use Wild Charge, but that's going to take some HP. And instead of using Eruption, one of Typhlosion's most 
powerful fire type moves, especially if flash fire was enabled. You could use flare blitz, which is pretty powerful, but also takes some health off Typhlosion. And you can use Brick Break and Earthquake, and Earthquake is pretty much awesome, but the other two options that you most likely will go with if you want max power, especially considering that even if you max out its physical attacking EVs, it's not going to be what it would be, like I said, if it was a special sweeper. Uh, you're gonna be with weaker moves, Fire Punch or Flare Blitz, which is going to weaken Typhlosion, especially if you attach a Life Orb to it, or one of the, well, choice items won't really change the game other than locking you into that one destructive move. But say you're locked in a Flare Blitz with one of the choice items and then a Water type comes on the field. Now Wild Charge is useless. So if it was up to me, I would say stay with the Special Sweeper. And that would about wrap it up for what Typhlosion is significantly good at. I would say Special Sweeper all the way. Physical, eh, there's slight room for that, only to show that its move pool is split pretty 50-50, and unfortunately it leaves some lacking things in each of those areas, but I think it's cool that it can learn extra sensory for special sweeping, and I guess that's all done through Darmani Tan nowadays with the 5th gen all enabled and stuff. So let me know what you think of this series below, and now I can mention the shiny giveaway, which is done every 10 episodes, and what that's mainly meant to do is thank the consistent viewers of this show so the way that you enter yourself into this is by sharing these series so share Pokemon potential and I will see it through my Google Plus you know share it through whatever Twitter whatever I I'm sure any means will show through Jeep Plus what you know I'm trying to adapt to those systems since the inbox seems non-existent nowadays because YouTube oh YouTube you just can't stay the same so I'm going to do the tallying through that. And it's not that the more times you share one episode, you get more entries. It's share each episode, you know, once, and that gets you another en entry. So you should have 10 by the time, or 9, I guess, by the time episode 10 rolls around. And on the 10th episode, I'll share what I give away. So if you want to stay tuned for this series, I would appreciate it. And to show my appreciation... I'll be giving away on the 10th episode a shiny Dratini in which we will train a Dragonite. So I won't be giving away a shiny Dratini without the information of how to raise it. And it is untouched for those of you who care. So I've been Z with Pokemon Potential and I hope to see you next week.